Mark Andreco. And uh, he's, he's the android. And uh, we've had a long story history of competing against each other, mostly on the Schmodown. And uh, in this special commentary track, we're going to do a commentary about our very first match, which was, not for nothing, both of our very first matches at the Schmodown. And it was also, like, considered... And I'm, I, I, it's weird for me to have to say this, but it's considered one of the best matches because the entire time only we get we answered every question and only one question was ever wrong, the whole time. So it was like a really close match. So. And up until the up until recently, I think it was the highest scoring. I know I had the highest score of anyone that ever lost. Yeah, I had twenty one, and I think. And I, that was higher than two people who were numbers two and number three after you. Yeah, and then I, I at that point I broke the points record. Although I think now it, that's that's long gone. But yeah. I do think it might be overall the most like accurate singles match. Oh ever. really? Well, because wow. we only missed one question the whole time. Wow. We answered them all. So uh, I'm sure someone who knows the stats is like scribbling down like, hey, that's not right. But this was a good match. I'm still proud of this match and. Um, it's going to be fun to relive it with Mark. Uh, with yeah, and, I and, and unlike you, I haven't rewatched this. The last time I saw this match was when I was there. So, so this should be weird and surreal for yeah. you. I rewatched it this morning just to freshen up a bit. Um, but we're just going to watch it together. So uh, let's roll the get tape. Started. Yeah, three, two, one, go. That worked. Yeah. Magic of uh, science. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Uh, I only know about this through the Screen Junkies dealings I've had with Mr. Mark Ellis. So yeah, I'm not only was this my first match, this was my here. first time Snow at the studio. Bad. No kidding, like yeah. total. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, this is my first match. I'd wanted to be on for a while, and it took me a real long time to come up with anything resembling a character. And one of the first things I tried to do, early Whitney Seibold without a beard there, uh, I wanted to do this weird growly voice. And halfway through the smack talk, I was like, I'm not going to be able to keep this up. It's not worth it. I'm going to abandon it. I've seen every permutation of Mr. Bibiani. What did that mean? I've always wondered. You've seen every permutation of Mr. Bibiani. I don't even. Here. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Just Boy. idle smack talk. I'm gonna get a lot of questions right because I have been watching the show. For Was this the first time we actually time. met? And I think so. I think so. Oh, it's it's weird. Like a couple people. Like I think I technically met Roka before this mm -hmm. match, but I never really talked right. much with him. And well, you know, uh, yeah, we talked. We spoke a little bit before this. I think I mentioned how much I was a fan of your comic book series Manhunter. Tournament of Nerds. Oh. Um. And well, I didn't thank you then. Thank you. I, you did. You did. It was nice. You get that. A lot. That's a great comic book series. I was never an athletic. Um. So it was just kind of weird to me that my first ever match would be with a writer who's. Work I respected, so, uh, and that was kind of cool. You can't spell What's crazy the is I, this was pre pre our current president. Oh yeah, look how much younger we look. This okay. was only like this was less than two years. Yeah, ago, we've, right? we've all aged so much. You look at any president. Look at them at the beginning of their so here, ten years. Yeah, but we're not supposed to age with the president. I know, but the president ages so, uh, super fast. We are not supposed to. This was I think this was recorded before the election, but aired right after. Yeah, this was recorded. This was recorded before Halloween. Yeah, this was like like in August, I think. So we actually make like a couple of Trump references, thinking, ha 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 ha. There's no way. Jokes on us. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird to watch it uh, in retrospect. Um, but yeah, no, everyone. You're gonna see like Mark and Ray. Like everyone was so thin then, and the rest of you still are, which is really great. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Things have changed a lot. Like I this miss is the back old when studio. they had the. The old studio, this is back when they had the old first round where uh, you didn't get the same questions. Like nowadays, everyone gets the same questions. This time, it was like we were answered. I was asked three questions, you were asked three questions, and they were different questions. Oh, wow. I, the one thing that drove me crazy about the old studio was they had a section of the floor with the laminate flooring, and it would always slide out, so that hit my OCD, so I was always trying to make <laughs> I kept expecting to fall and hit my head on that stuff. Um, Christian is was big, was really high on us, actually, which was pretty cool, and he built us up so much. In this conversation right here, he talks about how he thinks that there's going to be a potential four-points record and a potential potential champion and Christian, in the match with you Greg or me. Wow. No and he got that right right off the bat. We set a points record to to and, and I became champion and I became champion in a rematch with you so you came within a hair's breadth. Yeah. And I still think it's going to be yours one day. I would like to do it just once. I don't I don't need to have the belt for very long. I would just like to do it once because it's been so close. And you know as we've been playing this for a couple of years now, 
there's a difference between losing a match, being Ooh, defeated, well, we'll and, losing, right, and losing it yourself. To, yeah. You know, there's there's two different the ways of that. There, yeah. And yeah. When, when it's, see, I think both Morgan times Draco for me, it's been movies, Oscar frustrating movies, because if, if I don't know the answer, I, you can't complain. Movies, no, it's but a, when you know the answer and it's like right behind a defective synapse from your high school and you're like, that's the frustrating part. Yeah, that's that's when you're kicking yourself the whole time. Mark here really ticked me off because he was talking about step up movies which I put down as one of my strengths an actual strength of mine by the way and I love those movies Uh, but he joked about how like oh he's really into cheerleading Step up movies are not cheerleading you're thinking of bring it on I didn't say that no Mark did oh Ellis oh Oh, I'm sorry the other Mark (laughs) the other Mark and this is, are you you're gonna be in uh, Hannibal Lecter Uh, yeah this is this is the debut of that yeah so we were like backstage and I was all dressed up and you were I had no idea what the hell I was not doing. Yeah. Oh, coming out, you come out to the Beetlejuice theme, and I have discovered that every time I've ever come out to the to a Danny Elfman theme, I've lost and lost embarrassingly. Wow. So I don't do it anymore. So yeah. my, that, he, Danny Elfman is cursed, as far as I'm concerned. At the show. I think that might have been the only time I ever used that. I think so. I think he moved right to Wonder Woman after that. Zero wins, zero defeats, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, it took me a while to find the Charlie Clouser music, but I liked it because it William ramps up so consistently and builds a lot of suspense. Um, and so this was oh, mostly oh, stuff I already had. Uh, the jumpsuit was an old wow. Halloween oh, costume. The mask the was an old Halloween oh, costume. I bought the chains. An Those were fun. That is so we've literally. got we've got Star Wars, wow. Hannibal Lecter, oh, Friday the Thirteenth, an Afro wig. Well, I wanted I just wanted a couple of handlers, mm-hmm. and what they didn't want anyone to know, and you can tell because you can see it later, uh, that's Roca and Ken Knapsack, yeah. and they didn't want them to like they just wanted them to be playing random guys. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, I just wanted to come in like rah, break some chains. Kind of, I was actually uh, kind of basing it off of that scene in like the new guy yeah, with DJ Qualls like, uh, where he's trying to make a big impression which, on the that's school. That's the only time that will ever be said out loud in human r- human history. Because the whole thing is he wants to sh- show up and be tough at school so he shows up in the Hannibal Lecter costume and it was funny. Uh, back when there were only three rules in round one. Yeah, no JTE rules, no nothing. Old times. I am? Yes, you are. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. You're going to go first. Mark Andreco, category one or category two? For him? For you. You For get me? to pick. Yeah. Um, category two. All right. So I am number one. You're Will- William Bibiani from one. one Bibiani right. early in the lead as far as having watched this show before. How did you All get right. your name, so, by the way? <laughs> the Android. <laughs> they made it up. They just William made it up for you. Yeah. I spent like hours coming up. I came this close movies. to being called William Sliced Molly Ringwald Bread Bibiani. Plays Annie, an outcast you just been sliced. At Chicago High School in which film? Uh, Pretty in Pink? That is correct. Yeah. One point for... The audience these would be is hard, allowed Christian. to clap if you like. Um, I think they were afraid. Like of no one was interested in this match too. when it started because well we had no history in the oh, showdown. Yeah, so yeah. everyone was kind of really muted when it started. And I remember like no one cared about the match when it debuted, Smith and afterwards they cared. In the Disney film Pocahontas. Mel Gibson. That is correct. Two for two for the Beast in a category of action adventure. Hugh Jackman plays hacker Stanley Jobson in which film? Swordfish. That's one of the worst movies. Three for three. Oh, that 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 for scene with the Halle Berry. It's ugly. It's just ugly and gross. And yeah. And gross. And yeah. Mean and, and the whole movie. Can is I just be gross. Donald Trump and just be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> wrong. You're Even a, though I'm obviously right. Yeah, that'd be great. You're, you're a nasty orange person. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me Donald Trump. Well, well okay. All right, uh, it's an all-out Trump war. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Your first all question Trump in the war. realm of 1980s movies. Who played the gorgeous lady of the evening, Lana? In the film Risky Business, Rebecca De Mornay. One, One point, point for the Android. For Mark I can see you forgot it was played we this way. The world of animated right. movies, The Princess and the Frog, takes place in which American city? New Orleans. Wow. He even put a little bit of I Cajun like accent like in there. That was, that was really classy of you. I admired you for that. Well. Yeah, doing it now right. Now we move into action adventure. <laughs> Who played the accused criminal Mark Sheridan on the run from Sam Gerard in the film U.S. Marshals? Wesley Snipes. Wow. Three this. for three. This is a bad. We might have a new points leader on our hand here, Christian. Moving over to the category See, every time of he says that, it directors. You. William <laughs> <Bill>. <laughs> Ellis says this Who <laughs> directed the three Rush Hour films? Oh. It's not that famous. It's Brett Ratner. All right. This is pre Me Too, everybody. And directed might All be right. overstating And, and yeah, we both got a couple of digs uh, in on Brett Ratner. And then, like, a couple of games later, I got another Brett Ratner question, and I took your joke. was Will Ferrell coaching? 
uh, would be soccer, kids' soccer. That is correct. And for your perfect first round in the category of Oscar movies. No pressure. Sean Connery has won one Oscar, a Best Supporting Statue, for which film? <sighs> The Untouchables. Seemingly six bored by this. Six. It's weird for me to wow. see like my early attempt yeah, at having a persona. Because like Christian was really kind of wanting me to play up just like how cocky I was. And, and now Andrejko could manage I just couldn't keep that up over an extended Mark. length of time. I felt too the bad. Of famous oh, director. When I was a heel, it was Sydney exhausting. Pollack directed Tom Cruise in which 1993 thriller? <laughs> the Firm. Give and why am I doing that it, thing? Yeah. The firm. <laughs> hey, New Orleans. It's like trivia? I'm yeah, doing like <laughs> after dark dedications in on the world radio. Of comedies, Method Man and Red Man end up at Harvard in which 2001 comedy? How high? I was how impressed you knew that one actually. Yeah. Not a lot of people remember how high. That's actually not a bad comedy. No, it's funny. Both yeah, it's competitors. Cute. His final question in round one. Oscar movies. Don't joke. Who was nominated? for Best Supporting Actress for her work in 1989's Steel Magnolias. Julia Roberts. Give the man I was actually at a wedding well, once, and the groom's cake Thank was the armadillo cake with the red velvet, and it was we'll classic, playing, and it, it was seems delicious. Like these guys are just not gonna I highly recommend that it. That has never everybody. happened before. A perfect game on both competitors going into Don't build it up oh, so I have gotten a perfect first match before. Yeah, but it was back in the early six questions. Oh, God, I hated that wheel so much. Oh, that wheel. Oh, my God. I remember that tiny little thing. Also, there were so many more slices. Like, it's actually, like, better now that there are few because it's you can strategize more like when you have to think about what you're putting on there and each what's uh, what's left to get but man that wheel was a killer one point you can steal from your opponent in this round Bibiani, you are the favorite still and so it is Who's six deciding to <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know either, but I'll take it. We're based off movie games. That's what oh, yeah. Uh, uh, so oh, what's his name? Right? Well, if you like, you don't have to that go one guy. Oh, I'll go first. You want to spin first. All right, All right. give it a spin. Wheel Jeez. of Morality, turn, turn, turn. Right, Tell John's, us John's hosted like another learn. movie trivia on. show for um, comic book. Comic I think it was Screen Junkies at the time. Uh, I haven't done that it. before. All right. Comic book movies. He's just going to take comic book movies. All right, right. All right, here we go. Mr. Bibiani, Beast, your first question. In the world of comic book movies, what hero said, I don't want to kill anyone. I don't like bullies. I don't care where they're from. Did you know this one right off the bat? Mm -hmm. So this one, I was like, for, part of me thought, like, there's so many Superman movies. This feels like something Superman Reminded would say. First -timers, and I just wasn't multiple sure. Choice. Five. Multiple four. choice. Your options are, is it A, Bruce Banner, B, Steve Rogers, C, Tony Stark, or D, Peter Parker? Steve Rogers. One point wow, for okay. Bibiani. There you go. It's, first, it's frustrating for me. People question? say it wasn't a perfect game Who because they have to go to Harry multiple Osborne choice ones. In like, Sam Raimi's really? Spider Man trilogy. Harry Osborne, the younger, was James Franco. Two That's something I need to do more often. I can be a little impulsive when I answer questions now, oh, and yeah. I should talk it out Man more because I could have almost said, well, Clark Defoe. Kent's adopted hometown of Smallville is in which state? Still in Kansas, right? It is in Kansas. Okay. <laughs> they didn't move it. Like when it says Man of Steel, I thought it was specifically What is them. Ellis drinking? I don't know. I, it looks two. like Mountain Dew, but who would, who would imbibe that? Thor the Dark World. Oh, God. Hmm. Maybe it's an alcoholic Eric Gatorade. Selvig streaks naked at what landmark? Oh, it's Stonehenge. Two more wow. points <laughs> for Viviani. <laughs> He is a beast, Christian. He yeah. is a beast. He and is. now we see if Andreco has any sort of answer. <laughs> All right, here we go, Mark. You're up. Give it a spin. Is there nice. music? No. And it landed oh, on. that is 80s. That is 80s. 80s. Would you take it? I will take it. All right, Mark, in the category of 80s movies, who directed the film Parenthood? Oh, come on. Ron Howard. <laughs> Why am I doing that Boy, voice Grand thing? Rango. I don't know. I want to smack the shit smug. out of me. You're being a little Come smug. On. I would have guessed Mississippi. Why, would, why would you do that? <laughs> what is the line that helps Just kill Sarah that joke. defeat the Goblin King in oh, the yeah. Labyrinth? Yeah. I was surprised he didn't know this. At least on multiple choice. Uh, I'll do multiple choice. Because this is, this is, is your it? undoing hey, here. You would have won because of my multiple my choice. choice. B, you have no power over me. C, I am the queen of destiny. D, you live only in my imagination. Hmm. Can I phone a friend? Can, uh, can you repeat it one more time? Sure. A, I am the master of my and fate. And only three B, choices? you have no power over me. C, I am the queen of destiny. No, D, no. You, you live only in my imagination. Yeah. I'm going to go. I'm not real certain about this. Uh, Five. I am the queen of my own fate. <gasps> that is incorrect. 
you have no power over that me. That is correct. Viviani, wow. that's a big steal for two guys. So three this building is actually really close right. to Question a Barnes and Noble. Mm -hmm. And Who on the way home boss, from this Lumber match, I bought a Jareth from working. Labyrinth Fungo Bob. Weaver. That is correct. Oh, which I still cherish to this two day. points there. And Drago on the comeback tour. <laughs> <laughs> Your final question in round two. What is the name of the slimy news reporter in Die That one I didn't know. Oh, I'm, oh, um, I, I definitely need the, uh. Say, I knew it was William Atherton. Is it A, Evan Baxter, B, Richard Thornburg, C, Lewis Witt, D, Peter Thorndike? Richard Thornburg? That is correct. See, I would have got uh, my right, brain, whenever go. I see him, I immediately right. go Walter Peck. So look at this. At the from, end of round from two, Ghostbusters. it is 14. Oh, okay. Isn't he Walter Peck from Ghostbusters? Yeah, and he was also the, the evil professor in Real Genius. Oh, and I think right maybe that's what I'm thinking of. But, like, yeah, I, all, he always plays the same guy. Yeah. Here's how it works. Even in Biodome, which is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And you will have Stephen Baldwin, right? Yeah. The one who's now found Jesus. You are in the lead. He's who's now Justin Bieber's father-in-law. What? Yeah. Uh, and Polly Shore bite each other's toenails in that movie. They do. And that's the most disgusting. I would rather watch Divine Eating Dog Do. never seen as much. Yeah, Divine Eating Dog Do is not as much commitment to a This means everything. I love how they always make a big deal out of the actual numbers that we select in the third round as if there's a strategy. As if they mean anything. not get... Those points, I started using my anniversary Bibiani for a while, and that, that worked out pretty good for All me. All right, but for category 22, you picked fantasy. In the category of fantasy sci-fi, Morgan Freeman fights an alien force in this film based on a Stephen King story. Dreamcatcher. Oh, that that's is one correct. Of the worst King movies. But it's an entertainingly and bad movie, and I actually think it's fun right. to watch. All right, in order to it's one of those, like, what were the they thinking? To throw it back over to Bibiani. In the category of DC movies, how was the police commissioner assassinated in The Dark Knight? Poison drink. That is correct. Not only answering it correctly, acting it out as well. All right, here we go. So now it goes to hmm? William Bibiani. The beast is up, Christian. And That's a little private moment just for us. You We're in a good time with that camera. One. Said category <laughs> is scores and soundtracks. <sighs> Yeah, scores and soundtracks are people Raindrops call the bane of my existence. My head was written for what classic film? Butch Cassidy and Sundance. But I, a better question would be who performed it? That would be a good question. I don't remember. Best it. part yeah. of that yeah. movie. Not missed a question. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm not. actually not bad now, at scores and soundtracks, but it's not my good category, and I just got screwed by it when I played it against JTE. In the category of comedy, mm. in which comedy action franchise will you find Detective Billy Rosewood and Sergeant John Taggart? Five, four, three, two. Beverly Hills Cop. Wow. He Did you know that? Or were you acting? I was oh. no. I, it sounded like Beverly so Hills Cop, mm -hmm. but from the, my head, I was like, there's only like a couple of possibilities. Could be a Lethal Weapon. Could be Stakeout. But Judge Reinhold and who right. played those cops? Judge Reinhold and Ronnie Cox. John Ashton. Right. Oh, okay. Who was the dad in some kind of wonderful? Ooh, good catch. All right. I'm not a huge fan of the Beverly Hills Cop movies. I didn't watch them at the time. I didn't catch up to them when I was 30, and they haven't held up very well. Your category of crime. Russell Crowe stars as a quick tempered little cop Wendell Bud White in which film? L.A. Confidential. And there you Good go. song. I remember that theme song from L.A. Confidential. But it could have been anything. Russell, Cr Russell Crowe stars as a short tempered. That could be all Russell Crowe movies. <laughs> <laughs> win the game with his five pointer. He can break the singles record by doing it, and it's also short -tempered being the only competitor to get every question right and win. Your I didn't know what they meant by that. It turns out Mark Ellis had had a perfect question. game and you still managed to lose. Five, and that wow. corresponds to Disney films. Name the Disney film in which Honest John leads the title character astray to the sinful pleasure island. Pinocchio! And you're that was a five-point question. Now, back, I'm telling you, questions used to be easier. They really did. Like, after, like, this... Ooh, we led yeah. into a season, I think, the where they started introducing... Baby. Oh, it really started expanding too after this. Yeah. I think so, but like they were doing adding tougher and tougher that opponents to Snowdown. The questions had to get harder, and 
I'm glad they did, honestly, because this is this is an okay match. But yeah, nowadays these are not the hard questions. What were the names of Iron Man's arms? <laughs> that was a hard question. That was a, that was fair game, but that's a hard question. Most points we've ever had for a loser on the show, Christian. And speaking of points, we also have 23 for the record holder and your new winner in the Schmodown, William the Beast. Yeah, so 43. That, that's, does that still hold? Is that still holding up there? That's up there. I'm not sure if it's still for singles. I'm not sure. For singles. It might be. It's hey, what's pretty up, good. Fans? I'm, I'm still proud of it. I am here with William the Beast Bibiani. Man, not only did you say you were going to deliver, you didn't get any questions wrong. Well, yeah, because I'm good at this. <laughs> all of this, all of this is like I people. Mean, people thought this like was funny. All of this was really weird for me. Because you know me, you, we, we've talked like off camera. I I was have incredibly low self esteem, and this is really weird. Wait, what? Maybe back then. No, no, now. I, I've wrestled with it a long time. I just I know so I movie trivia. That's the one thing I'm kind of comfortable with. Well, yeah, I mean, the learning curve on this is fast. It has to be fast because, you know, I thought, like, uh, Bateman was a jerk. Mm -hmm. Andrew yeah, was a jerk like, until I realized, uh, oh, uh, this is all so character. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're, they're they're lovely. Uh, and oh, they're two of the nicest guys that we play. I mean, yeah. I, I I'm, they're, they become really good friends. Uh, they're really yeah, lovely this, people. This, this, but but when you didn't when you don't know that because I'm not a I'm not a pro wrestling person, so yeah, I have a familiarity, but. Coming now, in and doing this, I thought it was like movie fights. It was just like, oh, we're just, you know, it's like Jeopardy. They don't want shtick on Jeopardy. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no this. persona. Yeah. Well, there's no smack talk. I struggle with smack talk. And I'm always trying to make sure if there's any smack talk between me and another competitor that we touch base afterwards and we know that we're cool. One of the reasons why all my smack talk is kind of weird mm -hmm. is because I never wanted to risk crossing a line. Oh, Ever. yeah. Not even for yeah. once. I didn't want to even yeah. potentially yeah. risk it. Yeah. And every once in a while, uh, someone will smack talk back, like, and oh, right, to my way of thinking, they do cross a line, no, and I'm just sort of like, I know you're smack talking, but I'm literally dying inside, and I wish you hadn't said that. So yeah, it really hurt my feelings. So yeah, that was one thing where I just, I didn't want to get it wrong, because I knew Andreka was bringing it. But I think you really got yourself the lead with that labyrinth question when you stole it from Andrago. Who the hell doesn't know labyrinth? I don't. I'm still labyrinth surprised. I love labyrinth. Business. That's so my labyrinth least favorite the of the Henson movies. I have to agree with you. Really? I would one. much I rather watch Dark Crystal. Any I like Dark day of Crystal too. It, it, it's a love pudding for me. I'm more a fan of the Skeksis than I am about what the, the you, elf. You know, I've like made the joke a number of times, but I also think it. Seeing David Bowie free balling for two hours in widescreen, even as a kid, I was like, Wait, did it? Did anybody watch the well, dailies? So, this so is that a, gives new meaning to him doing this. I know. That wasn't his that. real yeah, hands, by the way. That was someone oh, was behind, it? Someone behind oh. him doing the arms. About this. Um, so I was, I this is actually a huge three moment three in the showdown team. that we're talking four. over right here because this said like years were the storylines in place. Like Roka was putting together a faction. I have, no what you're talking about, I have a feeling yes, that whoever yes, won our match yes, sure, would have been invited into the yes. horsemen. So <laughs> if I'd gotten any question wrong, or if you'd gotten Labyrinth right, <laughs> awesome. so you would have been the horsemen. If I, I would have gone but to if the I, then. But if I had gotten Beast, congratulations once again Labyrinth on your right, growl, growl. would it have still been a tie? Right, because Andrea, I did go to... I feel like under any other it would have been 23-22. That's what it would have been. Okay. Because you would have had one point less because it was a one-pointer for Labyrinth. Yeah, I think you would have won. Okay. I think you would have won. Um, so, and then Not you a David probably would have joined the horsemen. No, I, I, I probably would have joined the Lions. Well, I would have been exactly like him. I don't know what's going on, but sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you would have joined the horsemen. I would have joined the Lions. That, it is that, kind of legendary that, that way. Have had to fight, so, uh, you were up, obviously, against a very difficult opponent. You've made a very good showing. Is there anything that you felt like you were getting tripped up on It's so funny, sitting here doing this, I imagine that for fans of the Schmodown, it would be like at the end of like Freddy versus Jason, Jason and Freddy talking. Remember we did that? I would love that commentary. My favorite bizarre commentary but, track is still to this day on uh, songs, um, Galaxy you're Quest. You're more into like all puppets the entire oh, movie puppets and, and David Bowie. Oh, that's fine. And it, it starts out funny, yeah. then it becomes annoying, <laughs> then you become amazed, then it becomes funnier. Awesome. Now, obviously, as I say, you had a really good showing today. So what's, what's next yeah. for you? All you that. And it's not just the same sounds. It's amazing. This was a blast. This was super fun. I was glad I came into it. Look how street we look against that bra know, that, that so brick backdrop. It looks I've, like I've, I've suggested several you times. You did say at the top like of the show that like you've never seen an episode of the show before. I had not. I was <laughs> like in basements and things, making it real like play it up like Fight Club. It's like we're squatting on the Yo MTV rap set or something. And you think that famine was the right choice? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I could have psyched myself out. So.
Awesome. Well, Mark, yeah, you really great, great job today. And, uh, no, and I was lying to her. Again. I had never, so I didn't watch it even before I got there because it was. A, I remember it was a last minute right, thing. Mark, so there yeah. you go. And Listen, I think they changed Viviani the time for us. I, I remember it was, it was rescheduled. I think. Yeah. So I was gonna watch like them the, like right not before I went. But he did break the singles record. Only yeah, you broke the record too. You broke the singles record as well. I just he hopped, he popped, and he blew this little house down. But for Mark Andreco and for his credit, that guy really came to play. He's gonna be a factor going um, forward as well. I we have two think new the Irwin score was even higher. Even though one goes by that mile, well, oh, Andreco's going to be around yeah. for a bit. Yeah. We can definitely see him in but yeah, the top tier of this league for in sure. That, but that Viviani right now. I mean, it was look, fun. Is, it was yeah, fun. I mean, once again, season, even now, even the greatest debut. players, I'm telling you, by next season, you all of us have blind spots. Sure. You know, no one's seen every movie. And it's the luck of the wheel. It's the luck of the wheel. The luck of your memory that day. It's going to be great if you guys can know, And also sitting in the audience, you're always going to have perfect scores. Even the difference being on, on camera Harlow, on set, yeah. Yeah. we'll see you guys next time. stuff all over the place. That's a huge difference. Who's, who, who do you want to play that you haven't played yet? Um, gosh, who do I want to play that I haven't played yet? There aren't that many people that I haven't played yeah, yet. Yeah, you've gotten around. Um, I'd like to play Guy. <laughs> I was bummed they didn't get to play. Guy. Just because I really wanted to be the guy. I kind of, and I kind of wouldn't have a problem if I lost to him because he, his, his de defeating of Dan this year was probably my one of my favorite matches of all time because he played spectacularly. Yeah, he didn't he, have he wasn't necessarily the, the most accurate, but his character was so huge. But his so accurate. but his strategy was great too. It was a was well perfect. played game. Yeah, you know? he knew exactly what he was doing. Like that's how you do a yeah. persona. He's no one has a better persona than that. Oh yeah, like and no one could be further from the person that they portray than Andrew. I think that's right. You know, he's yeah. such he's such a sweet guy that when he plays that and he embraces it and just goes full force. So good. Yeah, so I, I marvel at him. Oh yeah, honestly, yeah. and when he and when he and Bateman started doing stuff, that's when I'm like, I can't. Do it. I've never, yeah. I've always been awkward at it, and there are some people here who are clearly natural. Well, the one time I, the one time I tr when I tried to be very, very heel, I made Emma cry off camera, and I was like, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Oh, geez. Yeah, I no, it wasn't, it wasn't specifically anything I said, but and it's I thought, you know, it was just, it was just, she was, I think she was having a bad day, and I thought she was playing along with me by her reaction, because I was like, oh, we're gonna do it, like, you know, it's like doing long form improv. Yeah. And then off camera, I was like, and she was like, no, it's not because of you. And I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. There's this, this is... weird thing in the showdown where like half the people here come from like some sort of theater mm -hmm. or art background and half people don't. Yeah. Like they come from like, you know, Roka comes from more yeah. of a sporting yeah. interest back. I mean, he knows a lot about movies, sure. about that, but like he's really into the sports aspect of it. And I'm really into like the theatricality of it. And just that difference in perspective and how we treat oh, the characterizations yeah. and how we treat how seriously we take the competition can lead to problems. Well, especially if you've never problems. had, you know, never had any sort of fan reaction before. I mean, I've been writing comics for 25 years now, so I've been doing the convention circuit and stuff. Yeah. And even though it's a D-list celebrity, I'm used to being having putting on a little bit of a veneer in front of people. So when I read bad comments online, I love when people insult me if they're smart. But unfortunately, most of the comments are like, who's a bold dick? If it's know? a funny joke, like yeah. if you're genuinely if it's funny, clever? I, I'll, yeah, I'll take yeah. that. That's funny. Yeah. There were a lot of people had a lot of funny gags when I like lost against JT mm -hmm. or when uh, you know I started getting this weird reputation for always bombing the third round. Mm -hmm. People usually lose towards the end of their match. Yeah. I don't know why I get picked on for like losing in the third round. Most people who lose lose in the third round. Well, you know, it's just something for people to talk about. It, it is it is fascinating how over the, the over the it's been what, two years now that we've been doing this almost? Uh yeah, yeah. I think we I think our first match was in late two thousand sixteen. Learning how to play the game is important. I think that's the more important than actually the knowledge because you know, knowing how to listen and use the JTE rules and play your character and, and sometimes rattle opponents and stuff is something that is an absolute learned behavior. So if it was strictly just, you know, sitting around playing Trivial Pursuit, that's I, that's fine. I think it would be a di very different game. And I think, uh, yeah, there have been times where I guarantee you that my clue entrance rattled Jeff Snyder and just annoyed him until he didn't want to play anymore. Oh, yeah. Which was yeah. great for me. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. He did yeah. not know those questions, by the way. Like those, everyone like when I KO'd him, mm -hmm. everyone was like, "Oh, he threw it." No, he like after the match, he was like, "Does anyone know these?" We're like, "Yes." No, Jeff. I can't think of anyone who's thrown a match. I know. I don't think that happens. I, I know mean, people no. like to think that that happens because it creates this heel narrative. Sure. I can't imagine anyone would. Who cares? Yeah, and the it thing, doesn't matter. The thing too is no <laughs> matter no matter how much you might be exhausted or frustrated, the moment you're out there, nobody likes to lose. If yeah, you're going to be your play to win, and we've all had a brain you fart know, that, yeah, that cost yeah. us dearly, but that's not thrown. 
throwing a match. There's no throwing of a match. Nothing is scripted. Nothing is decided beforehand. No, I mean, like, no little story has, things, The, the storyline's like, outside of it, but no, but ma- the game, we, no, the matches are all completely on the up and up, and it makes yeah. me laugh when people are like, oh, they threw that one, or that was scripted, or that one. And like, it's always frustrating because, like, we all want the game to be as yeah. fair as possible, so whenever there is a controversial moment, <laughs> um, we're, we're always, like, you know, we have to pause for judgment. Sure. Everyone's always talking about it. And we're all get really passionate, but if you're up there being judged and it's like this could be the difference between me winning and losing, it's really frustrating to see everyone get all up in there. And more practically, who has the time to figure out how to throw stuff? The problem with cons- conspiracy theories are great. They're entertaining and they're funny. But we as a species can't get our shit together to do easy stuff, let alone these vast conspiracies behind this. I, but I think, I think conspiracy theories are comforting. They make you think that the world makes sense. Yeah, the like, world's no, random, like, like that, like that goddamn wheel. You could be the, <laughs> you could be the smartest person alive. You could be, you could yeah. be the best competitor Look, of all time. And if the wheel doesn't, it just boils down to: Did you see that movie? Yeah. If you didn't, you might be screwed. Like that's yeah. all there is to it. And let me tell you something: We're all playing catch up. No one's been around since the dawn of cinema at this point. There's a couple. What movies? What movies have caught you? Well, you've seen almost everything. There, there are movies that there are movies that because of this that I haven't seen in a long time that I will never see because they, I will I will never watch Ready to Rumble. You got, that got you twice. Twice. That killed me. When I heard we came the second time, I was like, what are the odds? I will never watch The Sandlot. Okay, The Sandlot's good. I don't care. There've been okay. so there've been. Ready I, Rumble's okay. I wonder what but... movie. Okay, fans out there, this is something. If you if you figure this out and it's correct, I will send you a bunch of signed free comic books. Wow. I want to know what movie has been asked about the most throughout Schmodown. You know, you know what movie has been asked about like an obscene number of times? The Sandlot. No, <laughs> Kingsman: The Golden Circle. There's, it's been asked like five or six times, Ugh. like very specifically, Kingsman: The Golden Circle. It's a very odd film to put just to come up that often. It is the I'm Batman. Sure it's the ba- hundreds of questions. But it's the Batman and Robin of the Kingsman series. It's, I didn't even it is like a, the first one. I didn't love the first one, but the first one, Taron Edgerton had some charm. Colin Firth had some charm. That last scene ruins the entire movie. It's, it's ugly. Honest, I honestly think the church scene ruins that movie because it's just... Means well, anything. tonally, it's an entirely different movie. That's a Sam movie, Peckinpah it's, movie. It's yeah. cruel. Yeah. It's, it's condescending. And it goes on forever. I'm sorry. If and, and this and this goes for Rob Zombie too. If you ever try to make listen to all of Freebird in your movie, that that is the most pretentious thing anyone's ever done in a film. And all of Freebird and violent. That's yeah, an really assault just, on your ears. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I like Freebird fine. But <laughs> um, we should probably start wrapping this up because the thing is over. Oh. Uh, Mark, it's always a pleasure to compete yeah, against you, and I hope we absolutely. compete again soon. Oh, we have to. We'll definitely do something in the year. Yeah. We've never competed against each other in a team. No. Uh, are you going to stick around? And I, I, you've you've jumped probably more teams than I think anyone I can think of. Well, yeah. I, um, well, just just twice. I was with um, I was teamed with uh, Burnett. Yeah, Blood and then, Cat. And then Snyder. Was it really only the two? I thought you'd yeah. in the middle. Okay. No, no there was not. nobody else. There was nobody else. Okay. So, no, I would, I would love, you know, to do if, it, if it couldn't be in the real matches because of what is planned for all the characters and stuff. I would like to do like a Patreon thing where we do a round robin where like you and I could team up and be, a, play, be a team and like play like Drew and Roka. Oh, oh, that'd McQueenie be kind of and Roka, cool. Where like it's just, just, just to shake yeah. it up because the matches that we never get to necessarily do for what the storylines are going. That's a fun idea. Just do something funny. Like, you know, we can even open up a poll for the Patreon people. Who would you like to see matched up just for fun? I wonder if this gets edited out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Put this online before Christian gets back from Christmas idea, vacation. Or, oh, my God. But I, I would mean, love that. That would be fun. super fun because the, the, the exhibition matches we played so have been so fun. stress-free as far as, like, Playing characters that they're fun and they're, they're competitive. They're so much fun. That horror match was a blast. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, that one that we did because the the first ex- exhibition match, which mm-hmm. was you, me, Roca, Sam, and Rachel. Yeah. Boy, was that a lineup. Yeah, and that um, was just the last minute because somebody canceled. Uh, it, was, Drew, it, was, it was supposed to be me and Drew. Yeah, and Drew, me and Drew, Drew got stuck in traffic. Yeah, uh, yeah, Drew got stuck in traffic and he just wasn't gonna make mm-hmm. it. And but we were there. I had driven all the way over here in the same traffic and I was like I didn't come over here for nothing we gotta do something yeah. and then you and I got really gung ho and Sam got really gung ho and we recruited Roka and Rachel which is like screw it we're doing a match yeah it was and fun it was so much fun like it was a hoot well I think there's gonna be a lot more interesting stuff happening this year with what I don't you know we all both know, both know a little bit of what Christian has planned yeah, for the yeah he doesn't tell season. us much but what he tells but us is very exciting the, the crumbs are really interesting and I yeah. think there'll be a lot more variety mm-hmm. and I think the Patreon will be thank you guys by the way thank for being you. for supporting it because you allow us to be these 
we're D-list celebrities you're, and have fun showing off our nerd knowledge. Uh, I'm not even a celebrity. You're you're a D-list celebrity. I'm hey, not even. On I saw the your list. name on a movie trailer where the, your quote was super big but and it said not William fame, Bibiani. Actually, that's IGN. kind of embarrassing. Like a lot of people think that's really cool. Like, oh my god, you were quoted in this thing. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Um, I don't get any. I I, yeah. I, I didn't do that for them. Yeah. I just told people what I thought and it happened to be complimentary. But it, uh, it'll be fun because I think the Patreon thing is now that they've had about about a year of it now. Yeah, basically they're, they're, for a year, yeah. They're finding their footing and how to expand that and I think we're going to see some really interesting stuff this year. I'm excited to watch the stuff as well as play it. Oh my god, it's so much cool stuff. Like seriously, like if you're if you're only new to Patreon or you know other people who are fans, uh, Patreon is going to be only more important and only more invaluable to the fans. And affordable. And for it's not yeah. that much. No. Honestly, we, we give you a ton of content. Yeah. Like we're we're deluging you guys with content and we like it. Yeah. I love doing this is this is like my favorite pastime. Well, the exhibition stuff, anything for Patreon is, is more fun because it's because it's less stress. Yeah. Because you can just focus on answering questions and hanging out with your friends as opposed to the, the storylines and the characters and all that other stuff that's going on. But even the storylines are cool. Man. Oh the storylines are yeah, the storylines are fun. The storylines are fun. Right, we really got to wrap this up. Yeah. I think I can hear them sighing on my headphones. Uh, so, everybody, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very, very much for being with us on Patreon. If you're watching this as a subscriber, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And there's Merry so Christmas if this is before the holiday. I don't and think it is. Happy 2019 if not. Yeah, let's let's try to make this year a great one uh, in the Schmodown, outside the Schmodown. Uh, be nice to one another and never forget, growl, growl. And I'm going to kill him this year.